Hello everyone, it is Pal Ponder on Weather coming at you with another video. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about and educate you on the October 20th Sunday event here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area where they actually had 10 tornadoes and talk about the advanced warning systems that were in place well in advance and it ended up being the most costliest storm in history without any casualties. So before we do get started, if you do like weather related content, uh, please consider subscribing to my channel. So let's get started. So here is the latest, uh, the Storm Prediction Center from five days out. So they gave you a lot of advanced warning with this system. It showed an enhanced risk, more like a slight risk, 15%. So this is, when you look at something, you know, five days out is way ahead, way ahead, but it gave you plenty of advanced warning, but it also indicated that this could particularly be a, a, a dangerous setup with showing this signature this far in advance. All right. And so here's the setup that was uh, issued on Sunday morning. So this event happened about nine o'clock on Sunday night, at least the start of it. And it showed from the National Weather Service, they put out a warning that they upgraded to an enhanced risk. And it showed the strengthening jet stream along with a cold front that collided to make this system tornadic, hell producing uh, thunderstorm. So here's the tornado watch that was issued again, well in advance. This was issued around eight o'clock at night and, and it issued a tornado watch all the way through uh, 2 a.m. and the tornadoes happen around 9, 9.30, at least the start of it. So you had, an, a, a, again, a, a, an hour to two hour ahead window to prepare. Here is the, what they call the EF scale, the Fujita scale. They changed this back in uh, 2007, where they essentially added the E. Usually it was just a, you know, category F tornado, but now it's an EF zero all the way through EF five. So here's kind of the ratings. I'll kind of show you a breakdown of them. So an EF zero is essentially 65 to 85 miles an hour. And that essentially peels off surfaces on the roofs, some damage to gutters and siding, but very, very minimal damage. But it is basically a cat one hurricane from an EF one is 86 to 110 miles an hour. It's a little bit more severe. It has roof severely stripped, mobile homes overturned or badly damaged, and loss of exterior doors, windows, and other glass bro is broken. That's considered moderate, moderate damage. And you can kind of see there's a lot of trees, tr you know, trees down, shingles off. When you get up to the EF2 scale, that's when we're talking about Cat 3 equivalent hurricane or above. Roofs torn off, well-constructed homes, Foundations of frame homes shifted, mobile homes completely destroyed. So you can see an F, 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 EF2 is fairly strong and is considered considerable damage. When you get up to the EF3 category, that's when you're talking 136 to 165. That's almost in a range of a Cat 3, Cat 4, even up to a Cat 5 hurricane, where you have an, an entire stories of well-constructed homes destroyed, severe damage of large buildings such as the shopping malls. And essentially that's what it kind of looks like. Sometimes, you know, almost complete collapse of structures, trees down, you know, down to the surface. When you get up to a category four, EF four scale, that's really extreme. It's considered a violent tornado. That's anywhere from 166 to 200 miles an hour. And that's well-constructed homes and whole frame homes completely leveled. Now you're talking cars being flipped up in the air, you know, homes, homes completely demolished and pretty much extreme damage. And EF5 is the, the most extreme there is. That is a very rare event. But when that happens, strong frame houses level off, foundations swept away, high rise buildings have significant structural deformation. So you, it's pretty much, it takes a, takes a house off its slab, essentially. So there's nothing left but the slab. And you can see cars flying, you know, a couple hundred yards in the air. Um, debris can be lifted, you know, 120 miles away. That's, that's the most catastrophic uh, damage you can, you can have. So let me kind of take you back time. This is an event. This was the 
I was going live on Facebook for five hours during this event, and I kind of kind of replaying this event where where we had a strong tornado signature at 907 near the Dallas Love Fleet Airport. And this ended up being a, a EF3 tornado at the time where it showed 1.25 inch hail and it showed us under a tornado warning around the, the Love Field area. And it showed a debris ball too. Now, a debris ball can be signaled on radar. And usually when that happens, it's usually indicative of a pretty extreme tornado on the ground. And this particular debris ball, and you can actually see it, this event happened at 9.07. It started around Love Field, and it ended up being the ground for 15 miles. But this particular debris ball lifted debris 16,000 to 20,000 feet up in the air. That's, you know, you're talking three or four miles up in the air. So that indicated that was a pretty severe tornado on the ground unfolding. It was at night, so you couldn't really see it. But here's the path of that tornado. So it ended up being, you know, it started around Love Field, Walnut Hill, Harry Hines area, and it was on the ground for essentially 15 miles, and it was about 1,300 feet wild, uh, wide, and, and it traveled uh, on the ground for 32 minutes. So that's a pretty rare event, and this, this covered a, a, a pretty much a heavily populated area. It was nine o'clock on night on a Sunday night, so a lot of people were home, but luckily they had a lot of advance warning with this system. But yeah, this this tornado ended up being on the ground for for a good 32 minutes over a span of 15 miles. And here, later on in the evening, we had a one two two a, a two prong approach where. I live in the McKinney, Texas area, and they had a what they call a hook echo on radar. And this happened about 12:30 at night, um, and you can actually see this well-defined hook on radar that um, it kind of had that classic C shape. The sirens went off, and it, it was showing this hook uh, echo right over the the McKinney area, which ended up dropping a, a tornado in Allen around right here. And here's uh, some of the tornado warnings that we had three tornado warnings simultaneously all at the same time, which is a pretty rare event that happened over a uh, heavily populated, densely DFW metroplex all at the same time. So here was the outcome of that event where it had essentially 10 confirmed tornadoes in North Texas. And you can see the scale. And so there was the one in Allen that ended up being 80 miles an hour where it showed that hook echo. They had a, a Wills Point tornado. These were EF zeros. They had one in Terrell and then one in Ferris. Now the EF ones were a little higher damage and we, we went over the scale. Uh, the one in Rowlett, they had one in uh, Rockwall uh, as well as Kaufman and they also had one in Midlothian. Now the EF2 tornadoes, they ended up finding one in Garland with 135 mile per hour winds. And they did find one EF3 tornado, and that was the one we talked about where it showed that debris ball over the Dallas-Fort Worth area that ended up being on the ground for 15 miles, and then peak winds were 140 miles an hour with that event. And this is an aerial shot from the Dallas-Fort Worth uh, Love Field Airport. This is a shot taken from someone in the plane, and you can see where I have it circled showing the lighter shade area where the t tornado path went showing the destruction that it left behind. And like I said, this went on for 15 miles. And here's some of the destruction. Here's in Home Depot that got completely collapsed. Luckily, the manager from this store had the uh, fruition of calling you know say hey we got severe weather coming so they let they let the whole entire staff go home an hour before they usually do and luckily by the grace of god that they did that and so this tornado hit an hour later and caused that ef3 damage and you can see the tornado coming and it had that complete uh, structure collapsed uh, like i showed you on that scale and here's some of the other damage. This is a public storage uh, facility that got damaged. And I'm showing just, you know, just there's 
hundreds of pictures like uh, of this event, but I'm just showing you some of them. This is EF3 damage, and here's some of the Land Rover dealership that got damaged here in the Dallas Fort Worth area, as well as the Cheddars. And this ended up being, like I said, the most costliest event in North Texas history. It ended up uh, having $2 billion in losses, uh, partly because it went over a lot of uh, higher end homes here in Dallas and it had a lot of uh, commercial complexes uh, collapse. But uh, kudos to the National Weather Service to uh, putting out a lot of advanced warnings with this system. So. You know, like I said, it ended up having 10 tornadoes and one was an EF3 that uh, no casualties, no loss of life happened uh, with this event. But here's uh, kind of a summary of the tornadoes this year. And you can see all the dots indicates where a tornado has actually landed uh, between January 1st and all the way up to October 21st of this year and how we rank uh, between from 2005 until now, we're actually third. We've had 1,567 tornadoes this year so far, and only 2011 and 2008 are now ahead of us uh, since 2005. And here's the actual overall tornado count all the way back from 1954 to 2018. And it kind of shows the trend, and these are, these are all the tornadoes, anywhere from EF0 to EF5, and you can see the trend back in the 50s, how it kind of elevates up throughout the years. And now we're into 2018, and you can see the trend overall as far as the number of tornadoes has been going up. And here's an overall picture of the layout between uh, the EF5s, the EF4s, the 3s, and the 2s. And so let me kind of zoom in to the EF5s. And like I said, that's the most deadliest, uh, most severe tornado there has been. And fortunately, there has actually not been one in the United States since 2013. So this is, these are the, the most violent tornadoes there are. There has not been an EF5 in the United States since uh, 2013. And you can see the bump up in 2011, and you can see the bump up in uh, 1974, where there was seven of them actually in that one year. And these are EF4 uh, tornadoes now. This is actually still considered a violent, uh, deadly tornado. And fortunately, again, that we had not we have not seen one since 2004, and that's when we saw a couple couple of tornadoes. But overall, uh, the trend has been down for severe, violent tornadoes at EF4 and EF5s. Here's uh, EF3, um, and that's the one that was uh, saw in uh, the Dallas Fort Worth area around Love Field. And you can see that we've had, again, a growing trend, you know, downward in the highest elevated. So like I said, we've had an upward trend as far as the amount of tornadoes, but the most deadliest tornadoes or the higher end tornadoes, we've had less of them, fortunately. But the 2011 peaks out, and I'll show you a map later, that it seems like La Nina years are the peak years that we see more elevated tornadoes. And here's a, now we're going on to the EF2s. Again, you can see uh, a lot of tornadoes now, and this is pretty much, uh, most of them have been EF0s, EF1s, and EF2 tornadoes. And like I said earlier, the strong to violent tornadoes, F3+, from 1954 to 2018, you can see the actual overall trend when we were, averaging per year about 55 of those tornadoes and at night from 1954 to 1985 over a 30 year span now the the last 30 years we've only averaged 33 so that particular trend has gone down for extreme strong to violent tornadoes and here's the overall damage that the tornadoes have caused over the years as far as uh, millions of dollars. And again, since we haven't had those extreme tornadoes, the overall cost has been going down. Instead of that peak year in 2011, which was a La Nina year, 
where we had that uh, extreme um, outbreak of tornadoes. And here's here's a pic where it shows uh, the tornadoes of being El, El Nino influenced and also La Nino influenced. And you can see in El Nino years, which we've experienced mostly in the last several years, we've seen a downward projection in overall tornadoes. But the areas, the, the time frames that we've had La Nina years in 2011, you know, sticks out that we've shown strong signatures of tornadoes, especially in the Tornado Alley zone. This is from the Storm Prediction Center. So I appreciate you guys uh, tuning in. I hopefully uh, you learned uh, value in this video. And um, if you did learn value in this video, uh, please share with your friends on social media if um, they do like weather related content. And definitely catch me in the next video where I protect you before and after the storm.